ADHD is a common psychiatric disorder, which most commonly we talk about among children. However, we know that about 50% of children with ADHD will continue to exhibit symptoms into adulthood. And these symptoms can include multiple things. They differ between people, but it can include lack of concentration, hyperactivity, or impulsivity. And when we think about adults, often that also leads to things like substance abuse disorders or mental health issues. The Ontario Drug Policy Research Network is a collaboration of people with expertise in drug policy from across Ontario. And our key objective is to generate evidence to help inform drug policy decision makers in this province. Now for this review, we collaborated with both the Institute for Clinical Evaluative Sciences, as well as researchers from the University of Ottawa and the University of Toronto to pull together a large number of different pieces of information to drive this review. Over the past several years, there has been a growing recognition of ADHD in adults. And what we've seen is that prescribing of ADHD medications in adults across Canada has more than doubled over the past five years. What we don't know is whether these drugs are actually uh, effective and safe for use in adults. And we also see across the various provinces different decisions regarding the access of these drugs on public drug formularies. So more information is really needed to understand what the best way of providing access to these drugs is. We looked at two types of drugs that are used to treat ADHD in adults. Stimulants, which most people are quite familiar with and include drugs like Adderall and Ritalin, as well as the non-stimulant Adamoxetine. And what we then did was gather information from a variety of sources, including the patient health data from the Institute for Clinical Evaluative Sciences, as well as evidence from clinical trials, as well as information from interviews with patients and healthcare providers to really understand the broad context of the evidence around this issue. We found that medications to treat ADHD are in fact effective in adults. And we also found that both patients and physicians tend to report really good outcomes when using these drugs in that population. When we looked at access across Canada, we found that there is variable access to these drugs for adults. And in several provinces, individuals will actually no longer be able to get publicly funded access to ADHD medications once they move into adulthood, despite a lack of evidence that these drugs are any less effective or safe in adults compared to children. There are two other findings that I think are important to discuss. The first is that these ADHD medications have been shown to elevate heart rate as well as blood pressure, which can lead to increased risk of events like heart attacks or strokes. This is particularly important as these drugs are being increasingly used in older adults who might have a higher underlying risk of heart, of, of heart events anyway. So I think until more research is done, Physicians should really exercise caution when using these drugs in older adults, particularly among those who have a high risk of cardiovascular disease already. The second important thing to note is that these drugs are addictive and can be misused. And so this really needs to be addressed because as there's broader use and access to these drugs, that does increase the risk for people to perhaps misuse them themselves or share them with other people for the purposes of abuse. So right now, I think, as these policies are being considered, we also need to make sure that those policies incorporate monitoring of these drugs to ensure that there isn't an increase in the inappropriate use of these stimulant medications. Although we found these drugs to be effective in treating ADHD in adults, not all provinces across Canada have equal access to these drugs. So we would recommend that policymakers perhaps reconsider some of these coverage criteria to broaden access to individuals of all ages in a way that better aligns with the current state of evidence, while also ensuring that those policies minimize the risk of abuse and misuse of these drugs.